Hello, welcome to the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, OU Medical Center, uh, part of OU Health. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. I'd like to share with you an interesting case today in our surgical pathology and digital slide review. It's a uh, patient who is um, about 40 years old, and uh, he is uh, known HIV positive. He comes back for attention because he's had some chronic diarrhea and may have been losing a little weight as well. Uh, well, of course, in an immunocompromised patient uh, or potentially immunocompromised patient, a couple of things come into consideration when they have diarrhea. Uh, these can include the infectious uh, diseases, the uh, opportunistic uh, uh, sort uh, that are sometimes routine and sometimes quite uncommon. Um, but it's also possible that the HIV virus itself may be diarrheogenic. Um, what we have found is that uh, patients uh, less frequently have diarrhea uh, in this situation if they're able to maintain their CD4 count over 200 per microliter. There are also various infiltrative and neoplastic disorders that can uh, uh, present at least in part with diarrhea, both Kaposi's C sarcoma related to HHV-8 and some of the lymphoproliferative disorders that afflict uh, HIV positive individuals. Now, uh, unfortunately, some of the drugs that are used to uh, uh, combat this situation can also contribute to diarrhea, specifically some of the protease inhibitors that are fairly commonly used. And lastly, you can't overlook the various nutritional deficiencies, especially zinc deficiency, uh, that can occasionally supervene in this population of patients. So our patient had uh, some endo endoscopic biopsies, and here's a representative image of what was seen. We see fairly normal folds, uh, not particularly hyperemic, uh, and we see maybe a little suggestion that there's a slight uh, degree of uh, uh, small micronodularity, if you will, to the uh, surface of the mucosa. Well, microscopically, uh, the sample was taken, uh, included multiple fragments, as you see here, uh, mostly colonic uh, biopsies here. Um, and as we look at this, uh, we can see that in general, the glands appear to be fairly uniformly spaced. There doesn't appear to be excess of inflammation. Uh, but we can begin to suggest, even at this magnification, that there may be just a little bit of extra uh, interstitial tissue here in several of these fragments, uh, slightly separating some of these uh, uh, tissues. So let's take a look here at one of these, and we'll uh, rotate it around here so that it uh, uh, looks like we're looking from the top down. Um, and what do we see here? Well, we see really no active inflammation. Uh, we see a few scattered lymphocytes, but that's entirely within the normal range. And then we have a, a slightly pale infiltrate here, um, sort of ovoid cells with central nuclei and so forth, and this pale pink cytoplasm. They look a little bit histiocytoid. They could be neoplastic, they could be histiocytes and so forth. Let's look at another area and see what this uh, can show us here. So we'll come up to this fragment and uh, turn it around again. And again, we say the same sort of pattern, somewhat reflecting what was seen endoscopically, a slightly vague nodularity pattern to this uh, situation. So if we've resisted the, uh, the inclination to sign this out as normal, uh, what should we do? Well, uh, histiocytes within a GI biopsy, um, particularly one that's immunocompromised, could be a variety of things. Um, and let's just consider what some of those uh, might be. Well, they might be xanthelasmas. That's perhaps more common in the gastric uh, mucosa. Uh, histiocyte. Uh, particularly in the deeper uh, lamina propria, can be mucophages related to crypt damage. We don't see evidence of that. The infectious components can be uh, Whipple's disease, of course, more common in the small bowel, uh, mycobacterial avium intracellularity complex, uh, and then less common uh, lesions, uh, things like um, some of the parasitic diseases uh, and so forth. 
neoplastic uh, infiltrates uh, in so-called diffuse malignancies, diffuse uh, carcinomas, melanoma, and so forth could uh, be a possibility. And neoplastic histiocytosis uh, also uh, should not be entirely overlooked. Well, uh, being that this is an immunocompromised patient, we're probably first going to go to the infectious causes and do uh, PAS and acid fast and fungal stains. Uh, even in the situation where it seems you don't have much of an inflammatory response, uh, because these HIV patients can obviously have a very muted uh, or non-existent inflammatory response uh, in this situation. So as you can see from this, I'm going to show you an acid fast stain, um, and we'll go to see what we can uh, define uh, for representative areas. Well, we're not seeing quite the same distribution. Maybe there's a few areas here. Uh, we'll come down onto this um, and hone in onto this, waiting for this to come into focus. Um, and the answer to be revealed is, as you can guess here, yes, we do have acid fast uh, organisms within these uh, histiocyte uh, uh, cells. Um, and this is entirely consistent uh, with uh, Mycobacterium avium intracellulare. Now, of course, we don't culture it, but uh, the volume of organisms um, and their uh, acid fast characteristic are uh, characteristic uh, uh, of that uh, disorder. But what else should be uh, considered uh, as we think about this? Um, typically, these do have a slightly raised nodular and plaque-like appearance. They can occur at any point in the, in the GI tract from the stomach on down to the lower tract. Now, in addition to HIV positive individuals, some organ transplant patients, especially liver and kidney, have also been reported to be susceptible to this disease. And if we're not clued into this uh, fact of immunosuppression, if they just say, you know, diarrhea, uh, we might easily miss uh, these uh, histiocyte uh, infiltrations on uh, routine microscopy because there's very little response and it may just look like uh, benign histiocytes. So uh, whenever you have a suspicion uh, that it's histiocytes, and especially if you have suspicion of immunocompromise, then uh, doing uh, the appropriate uh, microbiologic uh, studies and uh, bug stains would be very valuable. So that brings us to the end of this case, our final sign out for this. Ah, oh, well, I want to show you one more example. I guess we're not at the end of this case. Here's another example, this one taken from, as you'll see, the upper tract, uh, more in the duodenum. And here we see maybe a little bit more pronounced uh, pattern of uh, uh, histiocyte infiltration in the lamina propria, separating these glands a little bit, um, but uh, easily overlooked because they just don't look very uh, concerning. Um, and they're mostly pale. They're not the, the clear type of histiocytes usually we would see with uh, Whipple's disease and so forth. Um, so here's just another example. And you can come back and Look at these digital slides on your own time because I will provide the link to these slides uh, in the comments uh, for our video today. So uh, our final sign out diagnosis, mycobacterial enteritis consistent with Mycobacterium avium intracellular complex, uh, MAC for short. Um, and that would of course lead to further treatment in this patient to uh, combat that, but ideally to uh, especially raise his CD4 counts. We hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please uh, uh, give us a comment, give us a like. Uh, that does help more people to see these videos and be aware of what's going on. And of course, uh, if you like the series, please subscribe. Uh, that helps to ensure that you receive notice. We always welcome feedback and comments as to other topics you'd like to see addressed, uh, questions about anything we've shown. We try to respond fairly uh, uh, timely uh, manner for those sorts of things. So uh, I appreciate you uh, being with me and uh, spending this time. And I'll just say until next time, thanks for joining me.